let's take a look at a few integration problems uh, where we don't know the technique that we're supposed to be using. So if we're asked to find an integral or we have some application uh, where we need to find a particular integral, so suppose as a part of a problem or for the problem itself, we're given hyperbolic sine x 1 plus hyperbolic cosine underneath the square root dx. And um, we need to know how to integrate this. And you know, no one's telling us that we need to use integration by parts or substitution or a trig substitution or anything of that sort. Uh, so if it's up to us, uh, then we just have to use a little bit of problem solving and identify the characteristics of that function, which will help us do the integration. Now, if you go on uh, the course website, you'll see a list of different steps that you can go through. And uh, that basically, it's my, this is my thought process. When I see a particular integral, I go from top to bottom and see which of the forms that integral fits. And then that gives me, should give me a good guess on how to proceed. I won't go through it, those step by step. You can read them yourself if you want. Uh, I'm just going to talk through my thought process on how I do each of these problems. Now, for this problem right here, the key to this problem is, uh, first of all, I, I don't see any way I can simplify it first. Um, I, it's not a known derivative. I don't recognize this as the derivative of something. If so, I could just write that down and I'd be done. Um, however, uh, what I do see is underneath the square root, uh, I call this a nested function. I have 1 plus hyperbolic cosine of x. And I note that if I let u equal 1 plus hyperbolic cosine of x, then uh, that's an easy derivative. I could take its derivative, get du over dx, and move the dx to the right. Uh, 1 goes to 0. Hyperbolic cosine goes to positive hyperbolic sine. And that's great news because there's sine hyperbolic dx in the original problem. So uh, substitution is one of the very first things I always look for because it's not too hard to do. Uh, and if I do it, then I see that my hyperbolic sine dx becomes a du. 1 plus hyperbolic cosine uh, gets replaced with a u. And of course, I can read that as u to the 1 half du. That integrates to u to the 3 halves, divide by 3 halves, or multiply by its reciprocal. And then that will uh, allow me to plug in my u, 1 plus hyperbolic cosine, so 3 halves, plus c. And there's my answer. Let's take a look at another one. Okay. In this example, find the integral of, I see, 2z e to the 3z dz. All right. So uh, let's go again and think about this. Uh, if I don't know, I haven't been told what uh, technique to use here. So I need to kind of think through all the different techniques at my disposal. Uh, first things first, I don't see any way to simplify. I don't recognize this as the derivative of something uh, else. Uh, so the next thing I would try is maybe substitution. And again, I see my nested function here, 3z. But the problem is that if I let u equal 3z, my du would equal just 3dz. And the problem with that is that I still have a z out here. This, this z is never taken care of uh, through this process. OK, so uh, this is just a non-starter. There's no way I could plug in, I could replace 3z with a u and get this into a simpler uh, integral. It's just not going to happen for me. So let me back up. And let me rewrite that z there in the original problem. So back to the original problem. Uh, substitution failed me. Uh, what else uh, can I go through? This is not a rational function. I can't 
do uh, there, there's an e e in the problem uh, exponential function in the problem so that's no good I don't, there's no trig tricks I can use here uh, I don't there's no trigonometry involved first of all and there's no uh, th none of the trigonometric forms uh, so basically as a last resort uh, I think well I do see this I do see that it is the product of two different functions and if I let 2z be my u and the rest be my dv uh, that will work and this is a last resort because integration by parts which is what I'm doing here uh, is just takes the most time of all the different techniques I think uh, it's one of the trickiest of all the techniques uh, so I don't want to do that unless uh, it's absolutely necessary uh, so my u becomes a 2dz uh, when I take the derivative, my dv, e to the 3z dz, and then I integrate, uh, let's see, that. if you don't follow that, you could always do, you know, substitution rule, but for these simple integration problems, uh, I always recommend to just do a guess and check, e to the 3z uh, is its own derivative, but by the chain rule, uh, the 3 would pop out. So to cancel out that 3 popping out, I have to write the 1 third in the original. And then let us put it all together. The formula is u v minus v du. So for this problem, that would mean my u is 2z, my v is 1 third e to the 3z, minus the integral 1 third e to the 3z, and then du is 2dz. All right, and then let's simplify this. That's 2 thirds, 2 thirds z e 3z, minus, and then I got a 2 thirds. e to the 3z dz and uh, you know that uh, you can keep going forward if the result is at least nothing worse or if it looks like it might be cycling uh, in this case it looks simpler because I got rid of the z that was in the original problem uh, two-thirds is a constant multiple that won't be much of a problem in fact I can integrate this directly uh, just by substitution uh, so just like I did a moment ago I'm not going to actually do the substitution I'm going to do this in my head and guess at the antiderivative. e to the 3z, if I take the derivative, a 3 will pop out. I need to get 2 thirds. 2 thirds, uh, 2 ninths times 3 would get me that 2 thirds, right? And so that will wrap up the problem for me right there. Okay, let's take a look at another. Has to find sine squared plus cosine squared d theta. Now this is the perfect example of a problem where if you see the trig and you immediately start using trig tricks uh, to to integrate, uh, like you know double angle identities or anything like that, uh, you'd be wasting a lot of time. Uh, you know, you could, uh, it's possible to integrate this by rewriting this as, well, that's uh, one half plus, uh, sorry, minus one half cosine of two theta. And then this would be replaced with plus one half plus one half cosine of two theta. And then I could use substitution to solve the two theta here, the cosine two theta is here and here, uh, but that'd be way overthinking it. In fact, you might see now actually what this should actually end up being. If we go back and just think for just a moment, what is sine squared plus cosine squared? Let's just do the simple thing. That's just one. So, 
all I got to do is just, that's the integral of 1 with respect to theta, and that's theta plus a c. And, uh, well, that's, that's all there is to do. So, easy and straightforward. Uh, if you notice the uh, algebra trig uh, uh, trick that simplifies the inside, no, the integration wasn't the hard part. The hard part was just knowing the right algebra trig to apply before even starting to try and integrate. All right, one more for this video. So, I've got 3x squared, excuse me, 5x squared is what I want for the problem. The problem reads 5x squared plus 12 divided by x cubed plus 4x dx. And again, let's think through uh, this problem in order. I don't see any way this can be simplified. There's no factor in canceling that could happen here, first of all. I uh, don't recognize it uh, as the derivative of anything that I know of. Uh, the next thing to check for would be substitution. And the only thing that could really make this my life easier with substitution is if I let u equal the denominator, because then I could get a natural log function out of this. But unfortunately, I take the derivative, 3x squared plus 4 dx, and that looks awfully close to 5x squared plus 12, but there's no way you can get it precisely correct. Um, you could do, uh, you know, you could multiply both sides by, what would that be, 5 thirds to get the 5x squared, but then you would have a 20 over 3 dx you know, and that's 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 not quite 12. Uh, there are some algebra tricks you could do here. You could actually um, proceed a little bit uh, down this path, but I think that if you're doing, if you have this rational expression, if you don't see an immediate substitution that solves it for you, you're better off just going ahead and moving on to the partial fraction decomposition. So this is we'll abandon this. So instead, we'll try partial fractions decomposition. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we'll take just the inside. Again, that's a 5x on the top. I don't know why I keep Let's write it correctly this time. 5x squared plus 12 divided by, and we'll need to factor the bottom. The factor the bottom, we'll factor out that x, leaving me with an x squared plus 4. Um, Let's see, then, ah, partial fractions. Uh, I've got an x on the bottom. So there's only one x. You can write this as x to the 1 if you wish. Uh, that would be an a on the top, and then I stop because there's only one here. Likewise, there's only one x squared plus 4. Also important to note, you cannot factor x squared plus 4 any further. So I'll just leave it as x squared plus 4. And on the top, because it's an irreducible quadratic, bx plus a c. Now I'll take this denominator and multiply it across on the right, leaving me with a 5x squared plus 12 equals ax, excuse me, the x is canceled, don't they? ax squared plus 4 is left when the rest cancel. The x squared plus 4 cancel here, leaving me with an x. And don't forget to put these in parentheses. All right, so uh, I've already explained in other videos how to do these sorts of problems. I'll go ahead and skip to the punchline. If you do this work out, you'll end up with a is equal to 3. You'll get b is equal to 2. And you'll get c is equal to 0. So uh, to actually finish solving the problem, you'll go back up to the top. And that integral, you'll replace the fraction with the partial fractions here. Plug in 3 over x plus 2x plus 0, which I won't bother writing, over x squared plus 4 dx. 
And this you can integrate straight forward. Uh, that's the natural log of x. There's a 3 there, though, so 3 natural log of x plus. And here I see that I have x squared plus 4 on the bottom. Its derivative is on the top. That's the exact uh, derivative of natural log of x squared plus 4. Again, I'm sort of doing a guess and check method here where I, I if I'm going to just guess at it, I need to check and go backwards. If I take the derivative here, I get 1 over x squared plus 4. The derivative of x squared plus 4 is 2x gets multiplied on the top. So that is correct, and that is my answer.